Dwight Randy Rankin, designate Chief Fire Officer for the Cayman Fire Service. I've been a member of the fire service for 29 years, coming this August 9th, and I've worked my way up from firefighter to where I am currently as a designate Chief Fire Officer for the Cayman Fire Service. As a young boy, I think maybe 10, we had a fire in my neighborhood that was one of my friend's house and the fire crew came in and extinguished the fire and I saw how that affected the family. And from that day on, even though I'd said it before, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Early in my career, which was in 1995, I just recently finished recruit training and was on the job as a probation firefighter for maybe a few months and I was transferred to the Frank Sound Fire Station. They're known for where all of the major accidents happened. But because we were short on the shift, I had to be placed there and the sub officer had to take up the role as the operator of the equipment or the pump. So I ultimately ended up being on the rescue, which would be the first in attendance. We got a call one night for a, a, an, an RTC, road traffic collision, with entrapment. And I happened to be the first on scene where we ultimately there was one fatality and one entrapment that we had to ultimately cut out by using the Jaws Life equipment. Things that I was just recently came out of training, learning to do, I had to put in operation at that incident. And it was very technical extrication process that had to happen because he was wrapped around a light pole on the side. The car rolled on the side and wrapped around the light pole, so it was difficult, but we managed to get him out. He survived, but his passenger succumbed to his injuries at that incident. So Dwight Randy Rankin uh, is a really good appointment in that Randy has demonstrated real competencies for the role. Um, I've worked closely with Randy now uh, since his appointment, and I've been really impressed with his people-centered leadership and his vision for the Cayman Islands Fire Service. In the next six months, we plan many one-to-one -one meetings with our key partners, such as the Cayman Islands Coast Guard. The potential for, for water-related incidents. I think it is, it is integral that we are assisting the Cayman Islands Coast Guard as a partner in, in delivering the inshore to safeguard the residents and visitors of the Cayman Islands alike. I think that, you know, when you look at the amount of right now crews, passengers are obviously not coming, but when they were, when you look at one of these boats that go into the North Sound at Stingray City, you're dealing with 150, 100 people. If you had an issue with one of those, those boats alone, that would become a major incident. Mass casualty, potentially. Mass rescue operation. So it's very important that we assist in the Coast Guard and we work very well with them. And obviously we're looking to maintain and enhance that partnership over the, in the future. And Randy is a real believer and advocate of partnership working. We also plan a secondment for Randy to the UK for around 45 days, where he'll be exposed to chief fire officers in the UK He'll have some practical experience of the UK ways of working. We've got plans to, plans to visit urban search and rescue training facilities, which is an identified capability gap here in the Cayman Islands. We're also spending some time uh, working with Airdrome Fire Services and visiting both the Fire Service College and the International uh, Fire Training School in Newcastle. Um, Randy will also spend some time with the Cayman Office London uh, to get a broader perspective how he can link in with some of the uh, UK overseas territories. So a really exciting time for Cayman Islands Fire Service. Thank you for watching GIS Spotlight. For more info, 
visit us on www.gis.gov.ky. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Flickr, Twitter, and YouTube. This is a production of GIS Marketing and Communications.